All right, good morning. We're going to start with a series of video lessons on that cover the, the content from Chapter 8, which is going to be on these things called quadratic functions. And before we can get into those proper, we need to do a little bit of basics on um, some square root uh, properties and the radical sign and how that works. So we'll go really quickly on this first lesson just to do some basics to know the fundamentals of what we have to know. So the square root of a number is is the if you want to find the square root of a number you're basically doing the reverse process of squaring a number so if you look on the bottom here we have the number a equals seven we know that if we have a squared we take that a number which is seven and we multiply it by itself you end up with 49 that's great um, and if a was minus seven minus seven times minus seven is plus 49. now the square root of something and we'll see that symbol on the next page that's the square root symbol and if we were to take the square root of 49, that's the opposite. So we're taking the numbers that when multiplied by itself equals 49. In this case, it would be plus or minus 7 because minus 7 times minus 7 equals 49. And plus 7 times plus 7 equals 49. <clears throat> so what do the symbols look like? Well, this radical, this radical sign is what... When you take the square root of the thing that's underneath it, the thing that is underneath is called the radicand, and the whole expression itself is a radical expression. That's that's great. Those are just definitions. We don't have to worry too much about those. Um, just so you know, by the way, we're going to mostly deal with the square root, but there are other roots. You can have um, cubed roots, and you can have uh, fourth roots and things like that. Um, we're not going to see that all that often, but they do exist. Um, so just, again, just to really continue on some basics, the positive or principal square root of a positive number a is written as square root of a. We say square root of a. Um, the negative square root is written as the minus on the outside times the square root of a. Um, we don't have to worry too much about this. And you should know that the square root of 0 is 0, something that's good to know. Um, also, when you take the square root of a negative number, I think I showed you guys this in class before we left for the break. Um, if you take the square root of a negative number, there actually is no number multiplied by itself that'll give you minus 25. If you think about it, that doesn't exist. So science, uh, mathematicians have had to come up with a new term called imaginary numbers. Um, that is for these numbers that are square root of a number that can't be done, but it's still it's hard to explain, but anyway, it's called an imaginary number. And we define imaginary numbers with, uh, with the letter I. Um, so these definitions are actually relatively important, especially this first one, the perfect square concept. The perfect square, or a perfect power, is the square of a natural number. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and so on and so forth. So you should be familiar with these numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on, because those are perfect squares, and they're going to be important for this next process that we're going to do called completing the square. Um, and we're, we know we talked about rational and irrational numbers in the beginning of the semester. Um, we're not going to worry too much about that for now. So this is important. This is called the product rule for radicals. Um, again, for non-negative numbers, A and B, what this means, what this box is telling us, this is the formula for this. If you were to take the nth root of A times the nth root of B, it's the same thing as taking the nth root of A times B as the radicand. Okay, so you can basically combine two square roots. They're, it's the product of two square roots. You can put them both under the radical sign, or you can go the opposite direction. So if you have a product underneath the radical sign as the radic and you can separate those two out as long as it's the same degree power so for example it would look like oh i don't know the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 32 okay and you can go either way you can say the square root of 32 is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 and here are some examples down here and these are, this again, this is a cubed root. We're not going to worry too much about that. But the cubed root of 32 is equal to the cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 4. And this is how we technically simplify these things. If you see a square root, actually, this is a cubed root. Actually, sorry, what they're doing is they're looking at the cubed root of 8. We're not going to worry about this too much. Ignore that. The cubed root of 8 actually has a value of 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 2. So it's 2 times 
the cubed root of 4, which I just blocked out, but the cubed root of 4 is not a nice even number, but that's how you simplify this. And let's not look at these cubed and, and fourth root ones. Let's look at this over here to simplify it. So properly, to simplify this term, um, the square root of 75 has a numerical value. You can punch that in your calculator, but to, to mathematically rewrite this and simplify it, we would re actually rewrite this as the product of the highest perfect square that's a factor of that number times whatever's left. So if you think about the factors of 75 and those perfect squares, that 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, you'll notice that 25 is a factor of 75, right? So 75 is the same thing as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, because 25 times 3 is 75. And now, what you know is you know the square root of 25 is the number 5. So actually, square root of 75 would be properly rewritten as 5 radical 3. And it's actually, <clears throat> when you take, and the same thing with square root of 63, what's the highest, the highest perfect square that goes into that. That would be our number 9 in this case. Square root of 63 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times the square root of 7, which is equal to 3 radical 7. Okay. And by the way, not all numbers, not all radicals this can happen to. What if you had like radical 17? Um, that doesn't have any perfect square factors, so that has to stay where it is. Make sense? So that's essentially how those are to be, to be written. Um, here's the product rule in big long terms. What do we have to know here? Um, this is just doing all that in, uh, in, in language if you want to read that and, and look at that. But that's basically what we just did. Um, and then uh, on occasion, we will have the square root of a negative number. This is where we introduce the I, the concept of the number I called the imaginary unit. And i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And for any number n, the square root of any any negative number n is going to be i times the square root of n because i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So you're basically factoring out a square root of negative 1 and calling it i. So for example, if we were to take, uh, is this going to work easily? The square root of minus 82, that's really the same thing as the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 82. And in this case, we know that that is i times the square root of 82. And in this case, you can take some time and think about the factors of 82, but I'm pretty sure that 82 doesn't have any perfect square uh, factors. So this is actually going to be as, as simplified uh, as this is going to get. And let's look at the square root of minus 18. This is going to be the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 18, which is the same thing as i times the square root of 18. And now we can simplify radical 18 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And now you know that the square root of 9 actually has a value of 3. So this would be i really times 3 times the square root of 2. Uh, that's just, I didn't mean to do that, square root of 2. And then just to rewrite this as a final product, you actually multi you say it's 3i radical 2. That's just how you rearrange that. So that would be how you would rearrange and simplify the square root of minus 18. So that pretty much puts us on uh, an, even, an even footing for understanding how to write these square roots and deal with them. Um, the reason that's nice is because we can use this awesome property called the square root property, which basically means that if I see an equation with a second degree term in it, I now know how to solve for that x value. And all I have to do is take the square root of basically both sides of the equation. So if I was to take the square root of x squared, that would be equal to the same thing as the square root of a. Actually, it's equal to plus or minus the square root of a. I, you don't want to forget that. But when you take the square root of a number, it actually can be the plus or minus of the number. Okay, and don't forget that. So most of these quadratic solutions are actually going to have two solutions generally because one will be the plus solution, one will be the minus solution. Okay, so uh, let's do a couple of these as practice. So if you see something like x squared equals 10, I want to solve for x. All I have to do is take the square root of both sides of that equation using this property, 
When I do that, the square root of x squared is simply x, and the square root of 10 can be plus or minus radical 10, and radical 10 has factors of 1, 2, 5, and 10, so there's no perfect squares there. So this, for our purposes, is for my purposes, are going to be a good enough answer. If you want to, you can put that into your calculator, and it, you know, it would be in your best interest to learn where that button is, but you could also say x equals plus or minus, and I'd actually have to punch it in here real quick. Um, and that would be 3.16227. So that's why, in general, I like to leave it as, unless it's a word problem, we can leave that as in that form. That would be 3.166, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of numbers there. We'll talk about rounding when we get to logs and stuff, but um, anyway, good enough for us to leave it in this form. So here's another couple ones. So if you had 6 squared, 6x six squared equals 96, we're going to solve this just like we would a regular algebra problem. We want to get that, that variable by itself. In this case, we divide both sides by 6. We have x squared then equals 16. And now I need to get that x by itself, so that's where I have to take this square root property, square root both sides of the equation, and you have to remember that when you do that, that square root is the plus or minus square root of 16, which is plus or minus 4. And the second, the second one here is the same thing. We're going to isolate the squared term, so solve this, plus 4 to both sides. You have 3x squared equals 12, divide both sides by 3. You get x squared equals 4, take the square root, and you have x equals plus or minus the square root of 4, and your answer is plus or minus 2. And if you check those, you'll see that for both of those numbers, it actually does solve that equation. There's a couple more over here just to practice. I'm not going to do all of them. Let's just look at something like this. Um, a minus 5 term squared equals 32. Well, what do you do here? Well, this term is squared, and it's equal to a number, so all I have to do is take the square root of that whole thing and the square root of this side. You're going to have a minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 32. a minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. a minus 5 equals plus or minus 4 radical 2 because the square root of 16 is 4. And then to get a by itself, I have to add 5 to both sides. And the 5 is going to go in front of the plus or minus sign. So this is going to be a equals 5 plus or minus 4 radical 2. Okay, that's how that's going to work. <clears throat> and again, you could calculate that, but for my purposes, if you get this far, I think that's an excellent answer. Okay, that tells me you've done the math and you could just calculate those. But understand that this is actually two solutions. It's five, it's the same thing as 5 plus 4 radical 2 and 5 minus 4 radical 2. And one of these is actually going to be a positive number and one of these is going to be a negative number. I'm not going to do those other examples. You can do those if you want extra practice. Uh, we would we would subtract 27 from both sides, subtract 27, we'd have t plus 4 squared equals minus 27. We'll do this super quick. Take the square root of both sides on this. We have t plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of m minus 20, oh, I'm losing my pen, minus 27. t plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 27. t plus 4 equals plus or minus i radical 27. And 27 is also 9 times 3, so t plus 4 equals plus or minus, well, we'll say that 27 is the square root of 9, oh, I'm losing my pen again, square root of 9 times the square root of 3. This is 3. So this is actually equal to plus or minus 3 i radical 3 t equals minus 4 plus or minus 3i radical 3 would be the long form for that. That is the solution for that. I did that quickly, but you can look through that if you want. And one last point. This is the standard form for quadratic equations. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. It's called standard form. We'll talk about that in the next video. That pretty much finishes this video. I'll pick up, um, I'll pick up 
where we left off because I'm actually limited to 15 minutes on these videos. So I hope this is making sense.